The A6E Intruder is a premium jet and war thunder added with the Apex Predators update. Let's check it out. As early as 1956, it was obvious to the U.S. Navy that an all-weather carrier-capable jet bomber was needed to replace the Douglas Sky Raider. Experience in the Korean War was a major factor in identifying that close air support was often unavailable in bad weather, and once the enemy realized this, they frequently conducted attacks in the rain or in overcast skies. Almost a dozen proposals were submitted for the new requirement, but in the end, the A2F1 from Grumman was selected for development. The prototype made its first flight in 1960, but there were a large number of issues with the early aircraft, as was kind of typical of the day. Modifications came quickly though, and the initial version, now called the A6A, entered regular service in 1963. The plane featured an advanced radar, attack, and navigation system and is generally considered to be the first all-weather jet bomber, but it also retained a surprising amount of agility for such a large subsonic attack plane. The designers anticipated the potential for interception and the need to defend itself and built the plane with an oversized wing design that provided a turn rate significantly above average for a plane in its class and also provided a significantly higher amount of lift than a lot of comparable aircraft, which contributed to a greater payload. Over the years, the A6 proved itself very adaptable in a wide range of specialized versions ended up being produced, including nuclear bombers, tankers, and even dedicated jammer aircraft. The A6 saw extensive combat during the Vietnam War, as well as the first Gulf War and several other smaller conflicts. One of the final versions, and the final version put into mass production, was the A6E, which was introduced in 1970. The E version featured an upgraded radar set, a completely new attack system, an inertial navigation system, which was a big upgrade, and compatibility with a wider range of weapons. Starting in the 1990s, the A6 was slowly retired from active service, being replaced by the FA-18 Hornet, and briefly by the F-14D using a targeting pod. The last planes finally left service in 1997. What we get in War Thunder is the A-6E Tram, a Rank 7 Premium Naval Strike Jet in the American tree, at a battle rating of 10.0. This jet comes from a pack on the web store for... $70. The jet has a radar set modeled, and is supposed to have a fairly sophisticated one, but for whatever reason in the game, you just get a blank placeholder with no functionality. The good news is, the jet gets a full ballistics computer for all of its weapons. It also gets an integrated forward-looking infrared radar and laser targeting system with an auto tracker. Keep in mind that the built-in FLIR is not the same as the IRST on a few other aircraft. The A6 has no internal cannon, but it can carry a significant amount of external ordnance, like a lot. You can build loadouts with a wide combination of sidewinders, dumb bombs, rocket pods, countermeasure pods, gun pods, and laser-guided bombs. The air-to-air -air missile it carries are the AIM-9G and AIM-9L. However, this is a premium jet, and it gets both unlocked by default, so really, the AIM-9L which is currently the best Sidewinder in the game, with all aspect tracking, 30 Gs of pull, and good range. It can also carry three different kinds of laser-guided bombs, the GBU-10, 12, and 16, all members of the Paveway 2 family. The GBU-12s can be taken in pairs, and they're the smallest, usually needing a direct hit to take out targets. But the 10 and 16 both pack a bit more punch with a larger blast radius. The plane has some built-in countermeasure stores, but it can also take external dispensers, which give an additional 240 countermeasure charges each. Not bad. In terms of flight performance, the A6E is a big and heavy subsonic jet bomber. With that in mind, how it flies ends up depending entirely on what you strap onto the outside of it. Without any ordnance, or like, with only one bomb on the center line. The plane has reasonable agility, a good rate of climb, and acceptable acceleration for a subsonic jet bomber. 
However, when you load up thousands of pounds of bombs and missiles, its overall performance takes an arrow to the knee. With that said, there are a few specific caveats to know about. First, the plane likes to hesitate sometimes for about a full second when pulling out of a vertical dive at low altitude. If you find yourself doing a low-level bombing run and, like, dipping the nose down a little bit to use the CCIP, or doing, like, a shallow-angled dive to find a target in close air support, don't panic if it seems like the controls feel weird for a second when you go to pull out, and try not to overcorrect with jerky control inputs. It's just a weird handling quirk of the plane. You'll be fine. Its top-end speed is right around 1,000 kilometers an hour, but with weapons loaded... It takes a while to get up that fast, as the acceleration won't be anything to brag about. The plane doesn't get combat flaps, but it does have a very effective set of air brakes, which can help it a bit when going into a dive from high altitude, so you can maintain your speed while reducing the risk of a wing rip. Speaking of which, in trying this plane out, I didn't run into any wing rip problems, except in high-speed dives without the air brakes, and it seems incredibly sturdy. In fact, there were at least half a dozen times where I took enough damage to count as being shot down, but I was still able to fly the thing back to the runway with like half a wing missing, a busted rudder, no flaps, so on and so on. Overall, the A6 seems like a pretty tough plane. Flying the A6E into air battles gives a very similar experience to the A10 or Su-25. You're subsonic, You've got access to a huge amount of powerful bombs, more than enough to take out a base, and you can take all aspect IR missiles. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that if you're comfortable with either of those jets, the A6E is gonna feel almost exactly the same in air battles, except for not having a big chunky cannon built in and having a different loadout system. Generally speaking, I had a good experience loading up with a mix of bombs, sidewinders, and sometimes the gun pod, flying out to dump on a base, then looking for some air combat on the way home. The A6 will never be a dogfighter, even at a down tier, but the AIM-9L is incredibly overpowered at battle rating 10.0, and you're gonna feel almost guilty about taking all aspect missile shots on stuff like MiG-17s and F-86Ks. But just remember that all of that stuff is going to wreck you in a traditional dogfight. Flying in a close air support is where the A6E's potential really opens up. All of this plane's weapons are viable in close air support. Even the gun pods can take out lighter targets. My personal preference is a loadout of three laser-guided bombs, a sidewinder, and an extra countermeasures pod. This seems to offer a good level of flexibility in providing three precision-guided drops, a missile for self-defense or attacks of opportunity on drones and stuff, and enough countermeasures to drop them all over the place without worrying. The main thing to remember is that the bombs, they're going to take quite a while to impact if you drop them from a reasonable altitude, so you're going to have to be patient before giving up on the lays. And, unfortunately... It means that sometimes the target will get itself killed before your bomb lands. That happened to me quite a bit in this plane, and it's a very typical experience with laser-guided bombs compared to Mavericks or KH-29s. Also remember that the bombs do have a limited field of potential impact, so even with a solid laze, they can still miss sometimes if your drop was sloppy or if the target is fast. Visually, I've always had a soft spot for the A6. I don't know what it is, but something about that weird combination of different shapes appeals to me, and even the refueling probe looks cool to my eyes. Some people think that it looks like a flying sack of potatoes with wings, though, so maybe it's an acquired taste. It gets a few different paint jobs already in-game, and all of them look pretty decent. Landing the A6E is pleasantly easy. Its air brakes make it easy to dump speed, and it can drop its gear at around 450 kilometers an hour. Landing flaps can go down around 400, but there are still a couple of caveats to remember. The landing gear is very tall, so if you're not careful, the jet is prone to bouncing a bit on touchdown if you come in too steep and too fast. And 
it's still a bit lumbery at low speeds. So if you're not coming in a straight line, it might be a little awkward to line up those last few hundred meters of final approach. As a naval jet, it also gets an arrestor hook that you'll probably never get to use, but it's there. The cockpit of the A6E is very well detailed, and it has reasonable visibility for a bomber. But it's a two-seater, and your FLIR display is over on the right-hand side. Also, the radar warning receiver is in a weird spot in the center of the console that can be easy to miss if you don't know where to look for it. Overall, it's a good cockpit in VR for a bomber. To close out on the A6E Tram, this jet has a great air-to-ground weapon system, with a ballistics computer, thermals, and a built-in auto-tracking laser designator. It can carry a large quantity of ordnance. It can carry a large variety of ordnance. The AIM-9L is just plain overpowered at BR-10, no matter what plane you strap it onto. And it can carry more countermeasures than you'll ever need. However, it's slow, and even slower when it's loaded up with bombs. It doesn't have a built-in gun of any kind. It'll usually get stomped on in a traditional dogfight. And it costs $70, which is a lot of money for one plane in a game. The final verdict on the premium A6E is that this jet honestly feels like an obvious cash grab from the snail. There isn't any reason it needs to be in rank 7 instead of rank 6, other than to let it research rank 8 jets without penalty. That said, it absolutely is an effective close air support jet and an efficient grinder in air battles. But if you're new to this kind of plane, there will absolutely be a big learning curve to its gameplay. As always, thanks for watching.